All right, today is the last day to get this turbo assembled on the big block Mopar 361 in my 1973 Dodge Charger. In the last episode, we built the entire hot side and we put it together. In this episode, we're going to install the turbo, we're going to hook up the cold side, and we're going to go ahead and run it for the first time. I'm hoping this doesn't take too long, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, I just finished filling up the motor with oil. I went ahead and dropped in a new filter, and now we're going to move on to the wiring portion before we can actually turn this on. As you guys can see, the turbo is now where the battery used to be, and there's not really enough room to put the battery on the opposite side, so we ended up putting the battery in the trunk. This is where the battery is now. I already picked up a roll of two gauge wire and we're gonna be running that all the way to the front because the car is going to be drag racing, not professionally, but it's going to be hitting a lot of tracks. A lot of the tracks go by NHRA requirements and because of that, I'm gonna to have to install a kill switch that goes on the back of the car and I'm also going to need to install a starter solenoid like similar to what the Fords use and that's going to be mounted up in the firewall. So we're going to go from the battery to the kill switch to the starter solenoid. And then from the starter solenoid, we're going to go ahead and pull power from that to the rest of the car. So let's go ahead and get this thing installed. For the fuel pump, this is what we're going to do. I have the factory sender right here. And I went ahead and modified it. Let's see if I can pull this out. I don't know if you're going to be able to see. But I went ahead and I added a electronic fuel pump. Oh, you really can't see it. But it's in there. There's an electronic fuel pump in there. I believe it's 525 gallons per hour. So that's going to give us plenty of fuel for the 500 wheel horsepower that we're trying to aim for. But no promises at this point. I also went ahead and installed the turbo underneath the car. So the turbo is actually right here. Surprise. And then we have the wastegate right there. So I'm not going to have a lot of clearance. But from the side of the car, you really shouldn't be able to see the turbo too much. I went ahead and I cut out a hole where the exhaust is gonna cut them out of. So, so I gotta go ahead and finish up the wastegate plumbing and the turbo outlet. I've also gotta make the line for the turbo drain and I've already made the line for the turbo feed for the oil. For the first charge pipe, I needed to make an S-bend starting from three and a half and ending at three inch so that way it can hook up to my couplers. I have a three inch to four inch 90 that I'm gonna install here and then a straight piece of four inch all the way to the carburetor. Let me show you what I made in order to get from here to here. So this is what I made. It starts off at three and a half, just like I mentioned before. And I have a couple pie cuts going down, 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 and then coming right up against the radiator and then turning completely up. Then it transitions to a three and a quarter slash three inch. And then from the three inch, I just did one, two, three, four pie cuts. And the last pie cut, I left a straight edge on it. So that way I can plumb a straight line from here to the center of the radiator and then back to that elbow. All right, so before we install the turbo, let me go ahead and explain to you guys what we're looking at. So this is actually pointed up, but in reality, it's gonna be laid over to the left right here. And the inlet for the exhaust, the three inch V-band is right here. On the engine, it leaves here. So it leaves through the turbo manifold into the three inch collector. From that three inch V-band, it goes into this pipe right here, and then it splits into either the wastegate or the turbo. For all intents and purposes, the wastegate is closed the majority of the time until you reach the maximum amount of boost that you set it to, and then it opens from the wastegate and then dumps back into the downpipe, and then it leaves out through the fender. The exhaust housing is three and a half inches and the compressor outlet is three and a half inches as well. I don't know why they decided to go with three and a half inches instead of the standard three inch, but that's just what they decided to go through. From there, it dumps into the fender, just like I explained with the wastegate. On top of the turbo, we have a dash four AN feed line, and then we have a dash 10 turbo drain line. Those are both oil lines, so this is what keeps the turbo lubricated. You wanna keep a small feed line to maintain pressure, and then you want a big return line so it drains all the way to the engine without it having it back up back into the turbo. If for whatever reason the drain actually gets plugged or overfilled and it starts building pressure inside of the turbo, it's going to go all the way to the maximum amount of oil pressure and then eventually blow out the seals. So in order to prevent that, you always want to go with the biggest drain possible on a turbo setup. The only thing missing at this point is the placement for the O2 sensor. So let's go ahead and drill the hole out and weld in the bung and then we can install this whole thing as one piece back onto the motor. All right, since we've already finished installing all the hard parts, let me go ahead and show you guys what I have here in the back for the fuel system. First thing that comes up is this number 10 line that I ran for the return. I went ahead and welded a fitting onto the filler neck and then ran the hose directly to that fitting. And so now when the fuel system returns back from the regulator, it runs into this number 10 fitting, drops back into the filler neck, and then back into the tank. 
For the fuel pump itself, this is what I've got going on. Uh, this is what we looked at earlier, the same thing as the sender. I ran it up to a 3-8 hose, and the 3-8 hose I ran it into a number 6. From the number 6, I had to run it into a number 8, and then from here forward, it's all number 8. So I've got the number 8 hose here, or dash 8, and then I've got the dash 10 hose here, and then they go across the axle and then head toward the front of the car. I just finished zip tying it all together, so I've actually got to cut all the tails of the zip ties but that pretty much covers the fuel system on the back half i've already went ahead and tested to make sure the wires in the fuel pump are working properly and then i'm getting flow through the lines i've already cleaned them all out before i hooked them up to the regulator so we are all good there let me go ahead and show you guys what i did up in the front a couple videos ago we switched out the proform 750 that we installed this black and purple one now we are taking that off once again and we are installing this silver and black proform and we're also going to be installing this three quarter inch spacer. We're going to be making the switch for a few reasons. The first reason is because this carburetor is already set up. I made over 500 horsepower to the rear wheels on truck tires and that was a couple months ago. That was on E85 so we're going to have to turn down the carburetor a little bit. And the second reason is because we don't have enough time. Like I mentioned before, we're only a couple days away from race day and this carburetor is just not set up for it and that carburetor is. Maybe eventually well, I'm going to go back and then do this but I am going to show you guys what I do for tuning on that carburetor carburetor so really it's the same thing we're just going to be switching carburetors we're also going to be installing this three quarter inch spacer to add some vacuum fittings and normally i wouldn't want to do this but i have to do this for a few reasons in an old video i mentioned that this carbureted intake has a messed up hole for the 4150 style flange so i have to use the adapter that goes from a narrow pattern to a 4150 style flange in order to get this thing to work these holes are countersunk so i can run some allen head bolts and run them through the carburetor spacer and into the intake manifold on the inside and then on the outside i'm going to be strapping that down to the carburetor that way i have a good seal against the intake manifold the second thing is that on the back port that we're adding for the brake booster i'm going to be using that for an an fitting that way when i take take off the line eventually when I get rid of the vacuum brakes I'll just be able to cap this off and we'll be able to keep the spacer the third reason for running the open spacer on top of the dual plane intake is because I want to get a little bit better field distribution and the best way to do it is to add an open plenum up on top of the dual plane intake you do lose a little bit of torque down low but you gain a little bit of horsepower up top since we're going to be running this engine on a two-step I'm not too concerned about low end torque but I am concerned about field distribution so so I've done this type of combo before and I've had plenty of luck so I'm I'm going to go ahead and go with that again for the front of the fuel system we have this aeromotive fuel pressure regulator that i've had this is the one that i used to have on my truck last year i've since switched over to a holly regulator on my truck and then this one was in my spare parts bin so i decided to grab it and throw it back on the charger i have the number eight feed fitting uh, right here and then i've got the return line down here on the bottom and then these two lines right here those are the two feed lines to the carburetor and then i have the boost reference line up on top for the fuel pressure regulator if we go ahead and follow those lines, we've got one line feeding the front half of the carburetor. This is the same line that has a gauge on it. And then I have one on the other side feeding the back half of the carburetor. And then the vacuum line for the boost reference is right here. The boost reference is going to add one pound of fuel per pound of boost. And that's going to prevent my fuel from backing up into the lines when we're under boost. You could probably run a few pounds of boost with a standard regulator, but you're going to run out of fuel very quickly. So on a boosted application, going lean could cost to the motor so whatever you can do to add cheap insurance the better all right so i just finished the last few things that i needed to get done one of them was the bracket for the cold side to make sure this pipe was not hitting the radiator and the second thing was to tie up the spark plug wires so they don't hit the header so everything's all good to go let's go ahead and see what this thing sounds like This is pretty much everything that I could reasonably do before race day. Tomorrow is the big day, so so hopefully everything works out. Wish me luck. I will see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher out.